Welcome to Building the Future, hosted by Kevin Horick. With millions of listeners a month, Building the Future has quickly become one of the fastest rising programs with a focus on interviewing startups, entrepreneurs, investors, CEOs, and more. The radio and TV show airs in 15 markets across the globe, including Silicon Valley. For full show times, past episodes, or to sponsor the show, please visit buildingthefutureshow.com. Welcome back to the show. Today we have Lola Priego. She's the founder and CEO of BASE. Lola, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I'm really excited to have you on the show. I think what you guys are doing at BASE is really innovative and cool. And I've been doing some of that stuff as well. But before we get into all that, Let's get to know you a little bit better and start off with where you grew up. Perfect. Yeah, I grew up in Spain. Oh, cool. This is uh, where this accent is from. And I moved to the U.S. about 10 years ago. Back awesome. in, in Spain, I actually started med school. So that's my background to then transition to engineering school. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay. what a change. How, how did that come about? I guess that, you know, I was the kind of kid that grew up saying, like, I want to improve people's lives. You know, I want to help people feel better. But then when I got to med school, the career path was so long that I, I have to be upfront. I got demotivated about the, you know, the 10 years in school and, and, and so forth. And I also always loved engineering and math. And I saw at the time big tech really coming up. Okay. So in my head was, I knew that the dots will connect down the road, uh, even though that, that sounds a bit cliche, like, but I made the change with, uh, you know, being hopeful that at the end of the day or like at the end of my career, I would manage to go back to the healthcare industry and, and look at where we are today. Um, so I guess that, you know, as I said, I transitioned from med school to engineering school. And then I came to the U.S. about 10 years ago to do a master's in artificial intelligence. Ah. And then, uh, you know, I went to work for big tech companies. Interesting. Okay. So what made you want to come to America? Well, I guess that for uh, an engineer and a software engineer at the time, it made sense, right? Like if you think right. about all of the products that you use in your day-to-day, -day, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Apple, Microsoft, uh, LinkedIn, like everything is in the US. So yeah. at the time for me, it made sense to to go there. It's a much better market as a software engineer to to work to work in. Nope that that makes total sense. So walk us through. You get out of school. Walk us through your career up until coming up with the idea for base, and then let's get into that. Yeah, certainly. So again, um, I really, you know, I felt super passionate about the, the cutting edge technologies development. So when I finished my master's, I went to work for Amazon. And there I actually worked in the recommender system a bit for content. Oh, I don't interesting. Know if you see, uh, actually for one of their content subscription digital ones, but then that also, you know, made me explore the entire recommender system at Amazon. I don't know if you have ever seen when you're shopping, like, you know, other yep. people also bought this or recommend That's it cool. for you. Yeah, it, it was super cool. Um, and then from there, I transitioned to work for Instagram, Facebook. And it was super fun because it was right at the time where when Instagram opened their New York City office. So I got to work with uh, and get exposure to the co-founder the technical co-founder and worked with him for a bit, um, which was super fun. And there I was just helping Instagram get grow from uh, 500 million active users to 1 billion active users at the time, wow. which was a super interesting goal and journey, as you can imagine. Sure. So then, you know, um, I started experiencing chronic fatigue. Um, I don't know if you've ever been there where it's oh, yeah. 3 p.m., you're trying to finish your tasks and, you know, you're working and you just like cannot power through. Yep. 
hundred um, percent been there. I, I know like exactly um, that issue, but keep going. Sorry. No worries. And, and then basically, you know, what happened at the time as a, someone that was, has always been really data driven, you go to Dr. Google and reading all of the advice from sleeping eight hours a night to working out five times a week to cutting dairy out of your diet, a lot of generic advice that at the time for me seemed not relevant for my case. And I actually landed on the keto diet. I don't know if you've tried that one. Uh, no, I haven't tried that specific diet, but keep going. For, but for those that don't know, it just, you know, you um, basically cut out carbs and you just eat fat. And after three months, I started feeling really off again. So at, at that time, I actually compiled a list of lab tests that I wanted to get done. Again, that medical background was super helpful. I went to the doctor, managed to get those approved, it was not easy. And after I got my results, that was my aha moment. I saw that I was vitamin B12 and folate deficient, but really deficient in those. That was explaining that chronic fatigue, like not being able to do anything after wrapping up work or being demotivated about stuff. In addition to that, to top it off, I was I I got hormonal imbalances and cholesterol problems, cholesterol issues from my keto diet. Oh, so interesting. The, yeah, and at the time the doctor suggested to, you know, for me to take medication, which was super interesting because I didn't have any history in, in cholesterol issues, nor that was a previous concern for me. So it, it was super clear that what I needed to do was to adjust my diet back again. And that was, you know, at that time is when I realized that there was a whole market out there for people who are really tired and they don't know where it's coming from, whether it's adrenal fatigue, vitamin deficiency, iron deficiency, to people who want to lose weight and they don't know how, or, you know, they have low libido, migraines, uh, skin issues, you name it, that all of those issues are usually rooted in a hormone, a vitamin, a nutrient that is off. And that's how the idea of base comes to life. It's, you know, what is that thing? What is that data that will point you to where the problem is coming from? So you can really know if you should adjust your diet, take supplements, adjust your lifestyle and really know and, and be empowered with that data to make the best decisions um, for your health. Yeah, no, I, I think that's, that, no, that, that's really interesting. So what made you so you go through all this you you obviously start changing your lifestyle and you start taking um different things for this but what made you actually decide to turn this into a business i guess that because you know and the, and the journey it's funny because at the time when i was at instagram what i did was to quit to go lead engineering for a medical device company first oh, in the bay area so i went there started leading engineering for both hardware and software in the medical industry which was super interesting you know getting into like fda approvals and so forth but what i saw is that by pushing lab technology forward we were still not solving the problem that people have no clue what's going on or right. do not understand science, feels not accessible, feels expensive and, and not data driven enough. And at the time, what I did was I started looking for other jobs, companies that could resonate with this mission. And, uh, you know, I actually looked into Mirror, uh, that, that company that Lululemon right. acquired in other companies related to, to, you know, fitness trackers and so forth. And ironically enough, the, I just directly <laughs> messaged the, the founder and CEOs on LinkedIn, which, you know, of course they were super busy. So at the end of the day, I didn't really see a company that solved the problem that I was seeing in a way that, you know, in my head was combining tech, science and and product and brand in a way that it blended nicely to put the customer first and you know the user first to then um you know create the, the product that is based today so at the end of the day i was not looking to be an entrepreneur it just kind of happened because i wanted to i wanted something like base to exist 
and because no one was doing it, there was no, not like an existing company that I could join that was doing it. I, you know, was kind of forced, or I guess I forced myself to start it. Interesting. Okay. So how did you actually go about launching this thing? Did you self-fund? Did you raise some money? Walk us through the early days of base up until what it is today. Yes. Um, I guess that let me preface this by saying that I'm super lucky working okay. as a senior software engineer in big tech puts you in a position where you have like, you know, close to half a million dollar, uh, you know, in, in salary per year, every year. And, you know, I, I had a chance to save money leading up to something like base. So starting the journey, I had the privilege of being able to self fund the company to put the first prototype out. Um, there's a proof of concept where we actually, it's super fun. We tested the, the concept in the streets of New York. So we partner up with the lab, we partner up with doctors, we built an app that was recommending tests depending on your concerns. So like if you come to us and you tell us like, I am chronically anxious or I am really tired and brain fogged and I don't want to be brain fogged. And this is a little bit more about me that app could already get you through what tests to take, could deliver results and provide some recommendations based on those. So I created all of that with that uh, with that self-funding, um, got a chance to hire a couple of people as well to push this mission forward. And we actually rented a truck that we actually hired another phlebotomist that would go on the truck. And we were there in the streets of New York City with a huge sign that would say, you know, are you stressed? Go come in and touch your cortisol levels. Um, wow. And people were hopping on this truck. Like, I mean, granted, it was really, you know, well decorated, of course. Uh, very, it felt really professional. And then at the end of the day, the lab will come up, uh, pick up the samples, and then you could, you know, see results in your app. So with that prototype, um, I raised some, uh, like a pre-seed money uh, round. And then from there, you know, we got a chance to put up a beta, which, you know, we raised seed. Uh, seat funding with and then from there we just like now we are raising a lot of money and we continue to grow and honestly I never thought we would be here today where you know the company has already more than a few thousand members and you know growing at an insane pace and you know we're trying to piece piece things together really quickly to to be able to sustain the growth that we are seeing today. Wow. Okay. So maybe for people that don't know, and you kind of mentioned it, but so if you can find a doctor that'll actually do this stuff for you, which can be really challenging, actually, um, walk us through that way of going about it compared to how base solves the problem. Yeah, totally. So um, let me just start by sharing a bit more um, on how base works. So basically, again, you come to our website, get dashbase.com. You take a quiz where you tell us like, hey, you know, I have an issue, like I'm fatigued, want to work on my weight loss, so forth. Or you tell us, hey, I want to manage my chronic condition better. Or I really want to prevent Alzheimer's or cancer, or I want to work on my, like on longevity, right? Um, so you tell us a little bit more about that. And then with that information, from the quiz, we actually do some uh, with data science and AI. We do probability on like, hey, we think that Kevin is going to be has a 60 percent chance of being deficient in vitamin B12 and also DHEA, which is the testosterone precursor. Yeah. So based on that, we'll pr prescribe that test for you. And then from there, you can subscribe from $59.95 to, to take, take that test. And the idea is that you take that starter test and then the results come back. By the way, you can take the test or either at home with a kit that you will mail back to the lab, or you can take the test directly at a Quest Diagnostics that you can walk in with your base app. So then from there, five business days later, you get your results in your app. And then we give you actually rings and like, it looks like a fitness tracker, but basically we'll tell you like, hey, Kevin, your testosterone is low or your iron is really low. This is 
where you've been feeling really brain fogged, or this is, you know, where you've actually been having those migraines. Um, what we're going to do in order to fix this and bring those levels back to optimal is that we're going to recommend that you have omega-3 supplements and, you know, like have some like uh, red meat or, or whatever, you know, like introduce walnuts in your diet, so forth. Um, and then we will retest you 30 days to 60 days after to see if that's actually working. And then from there, you know, you will go into a monitoring plan where you can actually monitor those markers related to the goals that you care um, every quarter or like a couple of times a year. Now, what we are seeing is that, you know, all kind of use cases are coming up, but without derailing, let me go back to your question and compare sure. how does this, you know, um, basically how, how is this process in comparison to going to your regular PCP that could approve certain tests? So um, the thing that happens here, even if your doctor prescribes certain tests for you, it can happen that then, well, you go to Quest, you get that lab work done, or you get those tests done at the doctor's office, that your insurance uh, decides to not cover things like vitamins or cortisol or melatonin, the sleep hormone, because that's typically not included into screening for a disease. Like indeed, I have tons of friends that are always complaining about iron not being counted towards their insurance, and then they get a surprise, surprise bill a few days after. But in the case that you actually, you're not in that camp and your insurance covers all kind of testing whenever you want, uh, you will be really lucky. So uh, the difference there is that you will have to do a doctor's visit versus in our case, you could do that online fully right. to get that test prescription. And then uh, some people like really like the accessibility of being able to collect your test at home. Personally, I it's funny because I like both. I also like going to Quest because sometimes like if I live nearby one, it's really convenient as well. So the thing here where we are going to start to defer a little is after you receive results. We give you a percentage of optimization score so we can say like, hey, Kevin, your testosterone is actually 60% optimal and you are like about, you know, a 70% percentile from our other base members, right? So in here as well, something that we are going to do is to use that data to start recommending you products and things that you can do and buy in order to fix that issue versus, you know, giving you a long report of like, hey, Kevin, like we're going to do all of these things. This is going to be more manageable in the base app where we, you're going to see the top three things that you could be doing. Start tracking those from, from the app. But the thing that people are... Uh, super excited about this is currently in beta and launching at the beginning of February is the ability to actually get recommended products on Sunday when you're going to do your grocery shop oh, shopping. Very cool. Um, yeah, where we're going to tell you like, hey, Kevin, actually, given the data that we have about you, uh, these are a few products that you can buy if you want to optimize for longevity or like, hey, these are the products that you should buy in order to fix your brain fog issues. So again, like bringing that aspect of personalized shopping based on your health data is something that we are super excited about. No, I, I think that's awesome. And, and you've kind of touched on it throughout the show, but, but I just want to share, I guess, a little bit of my own personal experience because you basically touched on it already. But I think like one of my like best friends basically went and got this test a number of years ago he was feeling way better. And I kind of thought, well, how much better can you really feel? So I kind of, I was like, ah, like a bit of a skeptic, I would, I would say. And then, you know, what you outlined earlier, where, you know, it's two o'clock, three o'clock in the afternoon, you have a ton of stuff to do. You can't focus brain fog. Like, I, like I just, there'd be days I just like stare at the monitor and it's like, I have a ton of stuff to do, but it's like, I just can't, even like force myself to work. And I was like, okay, I got to like figure out what's wrong. Right. Like there's yeah. something seriously wrong with me. And so, um, and you know, like as a startup founder and stuff, like people are depending on you and you kind of feel guilty for, for kind of slacking off some days or, or whatnot. And so I finally went and, you know, like uh, I'm on like a bunch of supplements now and, like the DHEA stuff and my testosterone was low and 
Um, you know, my estrogen was a little bit high. And so uh, I'm also celiac. And so it would never dawned on me as like mm. traditionally like celiacs can have really low uh, vitamin D. So like they gave me more vitamin D. So and then um, just changing my diet. The one big thing they said was like, well, I eat a lot of like gluten free bread or and they're like, well, if you keep eating like this, you'll probably be like type A diabetic. Right. And yeah. I was like, well, great. Like so. <laughs> Obviously, like I, you know, modified my diet. Um, I've been taking these supplements. Um, and I have noticed honestly, like a 180. And it's I started feeling better within a week or two. Um, and kind of all the brain fog, not sleeping. Um, because I'd wake up and be up for hours in the middle of the night, and it was because I was eating too much like starch and sugar and stuff that's in all the gluten-free yeah. stuff, and it was basically like they're like, well, you crash in the middle of the night and that wakes you up like a sugar crash. And, and so it's just like this whole thing, but I must say that like, it has changed me so much. And I, like, I recommend anybody at least try it out. Right. And see if they're going through all this stuff, because yeah. I think it's, it's been life-changing for me. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And so happy to hear that, you know, you eventually find out all of those things that were off and, you know, like all of those learnings, because in reality, like people sometimes like never find out and they end yeah. up to your point with, you know, diabetes, because they didn't know that those products, you know, were walking their glucose and insulin levels and affecting all of their hormones at once too. Because when you like the problem with hormones is once you screw one up, like the rest kind of get messed up yeah. too. So um, it's really happy to hear that you eventually put in the work because it's not that easy, right? Like to your point about going to the doctor before people like uh, we are lazy in nature, especially like with health, like because it's it's hard. So, you know, it takes time to like build up that, you know, courage and go to the doctor and start putting in all of the work to investigate what's going on. Well, yeah, no, hundred percent agree. I, I think the other big challenge for me was just time. It's like, and it's COVID. It's like, well, I don't really want to go to a doctor's office because people are sick, and like, maybe I'm paranoid, maybe I'm not. It doesn't really matter. It's going to take probably like an hour or two out of my day, and then I know I have to go for blood work, which I hate, like, because I fainted when I was a kid after I got blood work sitting in a chair, and so yeah. like, I'm paranoid still at. You know, I'm this was like I, it hasn't happened to me since I was a teenager and I'm 38. And so I still like make them like lay me down just to like take blood and like I'll bring like a juice box after because like I'm paranoid of like fainting again. And like yeah. that's a whole other issue. But so the fact that you will send me a kid at home is like a huge just like that one thing for me is like a huge stress relief. So it's like now I can do this at home. I don't have to go to the doctor and spend a couple hours, you know, of my day. And then it's like, well, I don't have to go get blood work at a clinic. Cause like it, it just, the whole thing, it makes me very uncomfortable. Right. And so if you, the more you do at home, you're saving people a ton of time, a ton of anxiety, and the outcome is so much better. Right. And then you can obviously choose what you want to take or not take. And in my case, it's mostly just like, take these extra vitamins um mm -hmm. and and some like you know a couple other things and i got some like testosterone cream because i didn't want to do the needle stuff but yeah. um right so th the thing that i found is it, it's made me feel so much better and the fact that you guys are taking away all this time and anxiety from somebody that's been through it and is still going through it like i think what you guys are doing is amazing Thank you so much. And just a quick note on the, the blood stuff. The, the good news is, you know, you, you always have saliva to measure things like right. testosterone or DHEA, cortisol, melatonin, which is really helpful because indeed those hormones are in higher concentration in your saliva than in your blood. So the good news is that at least for people like you, because they totally get it, um, it could be really traumatic, like when you don't have a good experience with blood collection, at least having saliva for some of the tests is sure. really helpful for some of our members. No, totally. So I want to dive a little bit deeper into 
the app and what you collect and and I can input it into it over time? How does that kind of work and evolve? Well, uh, as per today, you would ask about, uh, you would input things related to how you feel and your okay. uh, medical uh, conditions because that that is needed um, if in the case that you have abnormal results because unfortunately that happens you know as I mentioned Kevin we do see a lot of people that they are fatigued and unfortunately it's too late so right. uh, they come to us and they don't know this but then they get tested and it turns out that they're diabetic um, right. or they are pre-diabetic uh, borderline diabetic um, and in some cases again as I mentioned the Doctors need to review the results and, and reach out to our members to talk to them about that. But um, so going back to your question, you would input how you're feeling or your goals and your medical um, conditions, if any. And then we are working towards being having a closer relationship with people, because as I mentioned, um, what happens is that once people come to us to fix one thing, then they get hooked. And then they start looking into other issues that they have or working in longevity and things like that. So um, what we are thinking about is how can we have a closer relationship with people, especially if we're going to start recommending them, you know, what to shop um, based on right. their goals and, and their conditions. And how can we have a closer monitoring uh, of those symptoms that evolve in an everyday uh, matter? No, no, that makes makes a lot of sense. I, I think. That is one thing that I find really interesting that you guys are going to do is because it, it's like, sure, you're changing my diet, but to what or what do I need to do or what do I need to like replace it with? Right. I think yeah. that's other things because it's like, well, I like I enjoy like I prefer like chips over like chocolate bars or whatever. Right. And so right. like, OK, well, I'm going to cut out eating chips or like eat less chips but it's like, well, I still want something. So it's like, what do I replace that with? Right. And so figuring that out, I think, and navigating that and helping people with that, I think is actually really cool in itself. Yeah. And actually you gave me a great idea as we are building this technology, uh, cause I haven't thought about it, but specifically for people that are struggling with sugar and HbA1c, um, this is something that we can help a ton with. It's just like, yeah, like the first thing that you have to do is to cut sugar. So like having even sections for those things that you need to start totally. replacing in, um, could be super helpful. Because, you know, to your point, when I started my keto journey and at this point I'm in a cyclical keto diet because of the things that I mentioned before, full yeah. keto gives me cholesterol issues and hormonal imbalances. What I did, the first thing that I did was to find good replacements for carbohydrates and, and sugars in my diet. So uh, I actually got really good at finding those things that still gave me that kind of sweet flavor, but not really, but could replace that candy or cookie or whatever type of dessert I was having prior to switch into a keto diet. Sure. So how do, well, and I don't, I guess like, how does it play into, because every, like you mentioned it earlier about on the blogs are all like, well, you need to meditate and you need to exercise and you need to, you know, um, do a bunch of stuff. Like, and I'm not saying don't exercise because I think it is, it is important or, or meditate if it works for you, but like, do you recommend any of those, those things as well? Or, or how does base kind of handle some of those other things outside of taking supplements and, uh, you know, maybe changing your, your diet a bit. Great question. I guess that at the end of the day, all of those things, you know, getting eight hours of sleep a night, meditating, all of those things are good. But at the end of the day, what I do know is that humans you know, if you try to do too much, you're probably going to fail. Um, totally. So at the end of the day, it's also knowing what for is what always has helped me to like, you know, stick to a habit or create a habit. And I cannot like I'm this kind of person that, you know, after having a habit for one year, I kind of want to switch things up. And I like to like kind of 
drop off my habit and then come back into it and, and things like that. So for me, for example, I've been meditating since I'm a kid and I really enjoy it and I think it's great. But if you see it as a chore, at least like know that it's supposed to make you feel good. And if your cortisol levels are super stable and you really just don't like it, then just kind of, you know, put it in the back burner. And then if you're like super vitamin deficient, uh, focus on fixing that and making adjustment to your diet to, to actually fix that. Or, you know, like something that happens a lot is that there are people that have really low cortisol. Um, the, the stress hormone. And in that case, what you should be doing is actually going out for a walk. So instead of sitting down with your load of pose, listening to headspace or calm, yeah. just go out for a walk. Because what you need to do is to move for those cortisol levels to go up a little because you're experiencing adrenal fatigue. So again, it's not a one size fits all and it's understanding, you know, where your body is at. So you can then plug in, plug in different habits uh, based on, on that and, of course, your goals. No, I actually think that's really good advice. And I was kind of hoping you'd go there because I hate those lists that like 10 things successful people do every day. And it's like if you don't do those things or you don't enjoy those things, you could still be successful. And like you just need to figure out what works for you because like to your point is you've been meditating for, you know, since you were a kid. I've tried on and off to do it and I'm, I've had very mixed results with it, but, and it, it just doesn't really seem to work for me, but you know, I found other things that will do the same thing for me in, in replacing or instead of meditating. Right. And I think that's the one thing that I think if people are interested in going down this journey is you need to figure out what works for you and forget about what works for other people. You can try it or try, you know, five of those things. But if the other three don't work, stop doing them. Like it just, it doesn't make sense to like, you know, trying to fit that like square peg in the round hole type kind of thing. Right? Exactly. Yes, exactly. Like if you listen, if you hear that meditating is great for you and then you download the app and you're loving it and that's how you like to spend your time, that's great. Totally. But if what you're trying to do is to chill and de-stress yourself and then, you know, you turn on headspace for 10 minutes and you take that as a chore and then it turns out that your cortisol levels are through the roof and you drink five cups of coffee a day. Hey, what you actually need to do is to control your caffeine intake. It's going to be much more effective if what you're trying to do is to get more chill than turning on headspace for 10 minutes. So again, it just understanding what things are for to in order to prioritize um it's it's definitely key for me when it comes to health yeah and it's it's interesting like switching the mindset of trying to prevent something then trying to just like bandage the solution with an app or other medication or or something right it's like it was yeah. for me it was like a mental shift that it's like well no 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 like if you just do these little things over a period of time, the chances of, you know, X down the road are less. So do I want to do that or not? And it, it, like, and so I think just switching the mindset was a big kind of thing and eye opening for me anyway. Right. And it makes yep. you think about, it's like, okay, well, instead of leading X, it's like, well, do I want that? Or do I want something else because of whatever? Right. And I, I don't know, maybe I should have learned this earlier in life, but here we are. <laughs> I mean, totally. And actually, I'm happy that you brought up the prescription thing because we have a super interesting story from one of our team members. It's okay. actually published in our blog post, uh, in our blog, uh, as a blog post. And this was us running a case study on how CBD affects uh, sex hormones. Okay. So because CBD basically like lowers your cortisol, which cortisol blocks the production of testosterone and testosterone is a sex hormone, even for women too, because testosterone then also is uh, correlated with estrogen levels. So right. uh, long story short, you know, we were actually measuring the effect of CBD gummies in sex hormones. It was okay. a three day case study with a bunch of members involved and team members as well. 
super fun uh, clinical trial or like case study to to run, to be honest. And um, I was actually, you know, I'm involved in a medical um, group that actually reviews results, especially when those are abnormal, because sometimes what you need to do is to ask the lab to retest just wow. to make sure that the value is, is right. So interesting. I was, I was actually, you know, I got notified that someone got like three times the upper range of cortisol levels. And at the time when I saw the name, it was Grace, um, our, you know, interim head of content at the time. And I was shocked because I was actually um, sitting in front of her at that time when I got the email. So I asked her, hey, Grace, what were you doing when you collected this sample? And she's like, nothing like i was having a normal day and i'm like are you sure that you didn't go for like crazy like three hour run and you spit on the tube <laughs> while you were running like and she was like no you know like I, I was just working and she was always the kind of person that mentioned that she had work anxiety okay she always opened she, she always opened up about that fact so long story short, it turns out that her cortisol levels were through the roof and cortisol is directly correlated with your anxiety levels. So the more anxious you get, the more your cortisol goes up and there's a feedback mm. loop. The more your cortisol starts to go up, the more anxious you, you get. Basically, you know, like then the app recommended a few things, but also like, you know, in that case that the doctors had to get involved. So I called the doc, one of her doctors and he asked Grace, like, how much coffee did you drink? And she's like, you know, five cups a day. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, fair that she had those cortisol levels. But what she didn't know is the correlation in between cortisol, caffeine, and anxiety at the time. I don't know if you've uh, ever had a few yeah. coffees on a Sunday and experience how that actually impacts and increases your Sunday scaries. That long story short, she got really frustrated because at that point she was on anxiety medication for two years Wow! working with a psychiatrist and also a therapist for her work anxiety and it was shocking for her that or that at the end of the day her psychiatrist never ordered a, a hormonal test to see how hormones were also playing a role in her anxiety long story short she incorporated the lifestyle and nutritional advice and eventually actually got to wear off her anxiety medication Wow. Which was a, you know, a great learning that sometimes, you know, you get really anxious and we turn to prescription without doing that investigation work or let work or like even we when we are ready on medication, we try to we don't try enough to scale that back or see if that will be even a possibility of working with our primary care physician on that. So that was a huge learning for us as well on how with lifestyle and nutritional changes. In some cases, you could scale back your prescription. Yeah, and, and maybe you don't need to even go talk to somebody about your anxiety if you can get rid of it. And I get people would argue like you you never, some anxiety is healthy and it's good, but I'm talking like where it's really, really bad, where you can't function, right? It's like exactly. if it can go to kind of a normal human being kind of level, whatever normal means, <laughs> right? Like <laughs> yeah. it's where you kind of feel okay with it and you don't need to talk to somebody or you don't need to take medication to to regulate it i think is always kind of fascinating if if you can just do something else right to to get rid of that um no i i think that's that's very cool so i'm curious i want to dive a little bit deeper into cuz you guys have a bunch of different kind of um kits that people can get do you want to talk about the the different uh kits and then um talk about kind of the whole kind of package that you guys uh offer yeah totally and before i uh, you know we start naming all of the kits that we have we are finding that the most popular entry point is indeed with a quiz that okay person gives you the, the most personalized tests possible. Um, even if you want to directly monitor certain levels, it would do that for you too. But for people that, you know, don't want to spend those like, you know, three, five minutes uh, filling out a quiz, we have five type of areas that you can get tested for. There's going to be diet, 
energy, sleep, stress, and sex drive. Um, and in each of these areas, we're going to dig into those like hormone nutrients and vitamins that are involved in those uh, categories, in those feelings. And for the full package, you mentioned base complete, which it, it includes all of our eight um, panels or, you know, set of tests into one. This one was actually something that we had to launch because a lot of people like to get test everything to get tested first. So then because they're feeling, you know, across the board off and they just want to get a holistic view at everything to then decide what they want to work on. So instead of, you know, these are people that are usually not financially concerned because that package is for $150 versus the $59.95. Uh, for the other area. So in this case, these are people that are not, this, this is just generally people that are not concerned financially. They would like to have more data up front and they also have multiple symptoms or things that they would like to improve. So once we have all of that data, then we would decide like, hey, okay, you said that you were struggling with your diet, with your weight loss or, you know, bloating feeling and also fatigue. And it seems that these two like hormones or vitamins are the ones that are the most off. So let's just start working on those and then, you know, see how you're feeling after that. So that's the, the base complete package that I was talking about. Very cool. So is the plan down the road to have other packages or is kind of five enough or is there other things you can do or see what the future kind of holds? To be honest, the future seems to be pointing at the quiz as the, the best okay. entry point because we're getting so many different use cases, even people with chronic conditions that they want to use base to manage their condition better um, and understand how to eat and be healthier for that, like people that have diabetes or anemia, cholesterol issues, so forth. So long story short, um, we are investing more and more in the quiz. And then as we are seeing fit from the quiz, we may launch more specific packages, again, for those that are not necessarily like um, wanting to spend that time or that also want to gift base to someone else. So in that case, it doesn't make sense to do the quiz as an, an onboarding entry point. Right. Uh, throughout the holidays, we've seen a lot of people buying base for siblings, like family members, friends, which we didn't expect to have those all of those coming in as well so the, the packages will get developed as we see fit from the quiz results as well smart yeah like basically data driven uh you know product kind of design and launch right yep totally interesting very cool but we're kind of coming to the end of the show so how about we close with mentioning where people can get more information about base and any other links you want to mention? Yes, they can find everything about base on get-base.com. They can also find me at lola at get-base.com. I'm generally pretty responsive and, you know, always have some time for uh, call emails or like customer service tickets. I generally like spend 30 minutes a day looking into those, into our customer service tickets. Um, and then on Instagram, get underscore base. Uh, we are super active there um, from a community standpoint and content. Uh, we also have a newsletter where we try to deliver value to people about anything in relation to how, you know, you can find root causes to different symptoms and how different hormones, vitamins, and nutrients play a role in those. And they can subscribe to this newsletter through our website, get base.com. Very cool. Well, Lola, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to be on the show. And I look forward to keeping in touch with you and have a good rest of your day. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Thanks for listening. Please visit our website at buildingthefutureshow.com to join the free community, sign up for our newsletter, or to sponsor the show. The music is done by Electric Mantra. You can check him out at electricmantra.com and keep building the future.